is T here. So I was privileged or blessed enough to grow up in a house with a very rich cultural heritage and appreciation and love for um, black culture. I mean, I got to experience music, Lena Horne, Pearl Bailey, um, old movies, Cat in the Sky, uh, all that stuff. I can't think of the names of it right now. Um, Imitation of Life, all those great classic movies. Um, and I got to see representations of African Americans, you know, in black and white and, you know, when times were very difficult. I remember listening to a lady comedian when I was younger. Um, her voice was raspy. She was older and she made a lot of raunchy jokes. She made a lot of racial satire jokes and she did a lot of uh, what we would call lesbian jokes. And I remember that the crowd was always laughing. They were always cracking up. Um, my mother loved her. My grandmother loved her. My great grandmother loved her. And I am a fan and I definitely appreciate her journey and her story. Did you hear the one about the lady called her husband up and said, darling, when you leave work this evening, I wish you'd stop down there at Marshall Field and pick me up a bra. Well, it's kind of late when he got off from work. He's tired to it. He forgot what he's going for. But he knew it was something in the laundry department. So he walked up to the lady in the laundry department. He said, Madam, my wife told me to bring home something. I can't think what it is. She said, maybe I can help you. Say, was it a girdle? No. Got a belt? No. Slip? No. Bra? Say, yes, it's a bezier. She said, well, certainly, what size? He said, I don't know. She said, about like a grapefruit? He said, no, no, no. She said, about like an orange? She said, no, no, no. He said, about like an egg? He said, yeah, yeah, pride. Her name was uh, Mom's Mabley, and she was definitely a trailblazer. Um, there are many uh, black African-American stand-up comedians now. Um, there are many female stand-up comedians now, but back then, she was one of a kind. She was definitely, you know, the first and different all at the same time. She was born in 1894 or 1897 in Brevard, North Carolina. Her name was Loretta May Aiken. She had a traumatic childhood. Um, she lost both of her parents and um, she was raped twice at a very young age and resulting in, you know, two pregnancies where she gave up the children. At the age of 14, she uh, left home to pursue a show business career. Um, she joined the Black Vaultville Circuit, which was also known as the Chitlin Circuit. Now, the Chitlin Circuit was basically a group of performance venues that were safe and acceptable for African-American entertainers to perform at in the South during Jim Crow. Hmm. There's that nasty Jim Crow word again. The entertainers called it the Chitlin Circuit because the club owners would serve chitlins and other soul food during the performances. A fellow performer named Jack Mabley became her uh, boyfriend, so she took his name. She even made a joke in Ebony Magazine, I think in 1970, where she said that he took so much from her that the one thing that she could take from him was his name. So she, Loretta May Aiken, became Jackie Mabley. Moms came from her uh, nurturing and mentoring spirit on the road. In 1931, Moms worked with Zora Neale Hurston. <laughs> In 1931, Moms worked with Zora Neale Hurston on the Broadway show Fast and Furious, a colored review in 37 scenes. I can only imagine what that was about, and I'm going to try to figure out if I can find out what it was about, because I'm sure you guys want to know too. Also, in 1931, she appeared in The Emperor Jones um, with Paul Robeson. If you don't know what The Emperor Jones is, you need to go look it up right now. Google Emperor Jones, Paul Robeson, 1931. Now. Go. Now, but wait. Finish this video first, then go look it up. Her on-stage persona was an older woman, always in a house dress and a flappy hat. Um, she had no teeth. And That persona allowed her to, you know, come off as harmless, but her jokes tackled social issues like bigotry, um, racial injustices. Um, she also talked a lot about her lust for younger men, 
um, she occasionally sang a song. And I remember from one of the songs I used to hear her sing was about two old maids were laying in bed. One looked over at the other one and said, um, brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate, then no cream. And the audience was going crazy. It was hilarious. And despite her popularity, we all know that wages for uh, black um, women entertainers or black entertainers back then was basically uh, crap, for lack of a better word. But um, she still went on to perform for 60 years um, and be successful for 60 years. In the 1960s, she got the opportunity to become known to a mainstream audience, a more mainstream audience. She got to appear at Carnegie Hall. She got to appear on many primetime television shows and that you know, introduced a whole new generation and a whole new bunch of people to uh, Moms Mabley. Her career, she was built the funniest woman in the world. A black woman in the 60s at a time when the country was torn apart by, you know, racial, racial issues, the civil rights movement was going on. We were trying, black people were trying to be treated as, as equals. And she was built as the funniest woman in the world. And she used that title to help tackle those issues, social injustice, racial injustice. She used humor to make a very powerful political statement. In 2013, Whoopi Goldberg made a, a documentary about Moms Maybe, and we got to learn all about, a little bit more about her life. So if you haven't seen it, go see that too. Um, Whoopi Goldberg stands on her shoulders, and so do all of the other uh, feet women comedians of color. And... Um, so for that, I want to say Miles Mabley, bravo. We applaud you. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for being an American icon. Loretta May Aikens, also known as Jackie Moms Mabley. Now eat your day. Do what you want to do. Mom gave day. Who the shock to Lily Joseph, do what you want to do. I can't tell you who the shock is to. Mom can only tell you what's wrong and what's right. But Mom can't tell you where to hang out all night. It's your day, do what you want to do. Mom can't tell you who the shock is to. It's a joke! What you want to do? It's a joke! Do what you want to do. Mom can't tell you who you're talking to. Cause I can tend to my own thing. I know what I want to do. And I ain't gonna let nobody tell who you're talking to. Cause I may be old, it kind of been with years, but I can still climb a hill child without shifting my gear. Ah, so they chose me to what you want to do. My day day. Oops. All right, neighbors, that will do it for this Black History Month on Fact. And I will see you guys next time. TTFA. Hey, ho, hey, ho. Now, the chitlin circuit was. It's like I push record and then I can't talk. What is that about? And very poor lighting, you have to forgive me. One more time.